Hi everybody. Uh, we've been flat out around here uh, getting ready for the Christmas time and been able to distribute some wonderful little books, Christmas books, that uh, my nephew Brian uh, wrote. And we've been able to get 2,000 to one of the prisons tomorrow, another 1,500 making available to the prisoners so they can give these books to their children on a visitation day. They just get one day per month. And so the Christmas visit, they'll be able to give these books to their children. Many of these children wouldn't have one book in their home. And so you can be sure it'll be quite a joy. I remember having a book giveaway at a local school here out in the countryside. And some of the children after two weeks brought them back to the school and the teacher said, no, no, Mr. Nicholson gave those to you. They're yours. And some of the children burst into tears. Many of these big boys, you know, fifth, sixth grade, uh, coming up and hugging me and holding on to me and thanking me for one book that they would have in their home. And so it's a wonderful thing. We were able to distribute almost 5,000 of those books in the last few days. They've gone to the Sheriff's Department, the Boys and Girls Club in three towns. Every child got a copy of it. So really exciting. Pray that the Lord will bless. It's a clear message showing the fulfillment of prophecy in the coming of the Lord Jesus into the world. Well, I have been holding my tongue over these last little while because I was asked to write a book on, on the Pell family, and that's in the works, and Lord willing, the beginning of the year, that'll see the light of day. But there are all sorts of wonderful stories in there, some of them that I heard firsthand. I'm just going to share one of them with you and maybe whet your appetite and make you want to get a copy of the book when it comes out in a month or so. It's the story of the Pell family's Uncle Mint. Now, a remarkable story how their father, Peter, was saved. He was the eighth child of eight and was born there in Grand Rapids. All his siblings were born in Holland. And quite a remarkable story how the Lord saved him. And it's well worth the price of the book just to read that story because it's very enlightening. In any case, his older siblings, none of them was saved and until young Peter got saved. And this stirred up the family. Well, there was one uncle, one of Peter Pell Sr.'s brothers, Uncle Mint, they called him, and he was a heavy drinker and uh, was quite antagonistic to the gospel, fought against the Lord. Well, on one occasion, one evening, he was in a drunken state and he staggered into a derelict building and stepped into a room and suddenly he felt himself dropping down to hell and uh, ended up in a heap and thought to himself, he was in, in a cell in the bowels of the earth. And I thought of the words of Jonah in Jonah chapter 2. Out of the belly of Sheol, the, the King James says, the belly of hell, I cried and you heard my voice. And then later on in verse 6, uh, the earth with its bars closed behind me forever, yet you have brought up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. Well, what had actually happened was that he had stepped into an old elevator. It was abandoned and the weight that he exerted, stepping into it, broke the old cable, and this elevator had had fallen to the bottom of the shaft. Thankfully, it was not many floors, and he survived the trip. But he, he was covered in sweat, and he thought to himself, it's happened. The earth has opened up and swallowed me whole into the pit. And, and God sobered him up, and there he cried out to the Lord. And the Lord saved Uncle Mint in the in the bottom of this elevator shaft. Well, Uncle, his wife was also an alcoholic, and she refused to give up her drink. She left him, and so he gave himself wholeheartedly to the gospel, and he became a tramping evangelist, going from house to house out in the countryside, uh, sleeping many nights under the stars, or or sleeping in a hayloft in a barn. Well, there was a prominent family in Grand Rapids, the Pallon family, and they had a prodigal son. His name was Nick, and Nick had headed south, and the the mother 
Mrs. Pallon went to Uncle Mint and said, would you find it in your heart to go after my prodigal son? Well, he had traveled 170 miles south to Fort Wayne, Indiana. Didn't know where exactly he was in the town, but they knew he was in Fort Wayne. Uncle Mint began sharing the gospel along the way and walked 170 miles until he got to Fort Wayne, sharing the gospel along the way to the farmers and the farm wives in these houses until eventually he got there. He searched the town and found the boarding house where Nick Pallon was living. Nick was decorating the uh, the show windows in the department stores. Uh, he was quite a, an artistic fellow, and that's what he was doing. He refused to listen to Uncle Mint. He didn't want a word of the gospel. But Uncle Mint told him, I have walked 170 miles to bring this message to you. I have no other obligations. I'm staying here until the job is done. And the God of heaven got a hold of that wayward boy through the prayers of his mother and this remarkable testimony of Uncle Mint. And Nick Pallon got saved. And if you get the book, you'll find out the strategic role that Nick Pallon had later on in the Pell's ministry and the starting of Rest Haven Homes. So, one little story. Even in extremity, a poor man thought he had been dropped into the pit, but God had saved him there in the darkness. Out of the belly of hell I cried, and he heard my voice. The deep closed around me, he says. The earth with its bars closed behind me forever. Yet, you have brought up my life from the pit. Oh, Lord, my God, what a wonderful thing. God is very serious about saving people. And especially when mothers are praying for their wayward boys, God takes it very seriously. May God bring some prodigals home this week. May some mothers get a knock at the door or a phone call. Mother, I've come home. Pray to that end with me, and may God do a mighty work, even if it means a few elevator shafts or a few long walks to bring the love of God to wayward prodigals. <laughs>